How's it going? Jacob here with Smetic Performance. In today's video, I'm going to show you the updated way to measure your LS pushrod length. I actually made a video of how to do this, I think at this point a year ago. It's actually in the description, or it has been for a while, but we've kind of learned a little bit better, more efficient, more accurate way to measure push rods that is also a whole lot easier and I want to show that to you today. The engine we are going to be working on is an RHS based 427 cubic inch supercharger engine that's going to make about 1500 horsepower. I just finished getting the whole long block assembled. I've got the heads on, everything's ready to go and now it's time for me to measure my push rods. This engine runs our Gatorman link bar lifter as well as our 11 degree fully CNC ported cylinder head. The tools you will need for this you need both an exhaust and an intake rocker arm, a couple rocker bolts, socket torque wrench, a ratchet to turn the motor over, as well as an adjustable push rod in the range that you need to be in, and a set of calipers. All right, first what we're gonna do is we need to get the camshaft on the base circle of its lobe. You cannot check your push rod length if the camshaft is on lift or on duration of its lobe. So if I want to measure my intake first, I'm actually going to put my push rod in my exhaust lifter cup and I'm going to roll it over until my exhaust lifter starts to raise. So it's going down the camshaft now, it's on base circle. Putting a little bit of pressure on it with my finger. and now it just started to rise. So when the exhaust starts to open, your intake is on base circle. When your intake starts to close, your exhaust is on base circle. So my exhaust lobe just started to open, so now we're gonna take our adjustable push rod and we're gonna throw it down onto our Gatorman intake lifter. Make sure it's seated. Then all you're gonna do is take your intake rocker arm Make sure the push rod is correctly in the cup of the rocker arm. And we're going to torque this down. It's okay that there is lash. We're gonna fix that in just a second. We're gonna to torque this to 22 foot pounds. Boom. Now, the easy part of this. Yes, we have lash. All you have to do, close the rocker arm against the lifter, get your fingers in there, and you're gonna expand your adjustable push rod. Keep rolling it over, and it will take up the slack, and take up your lash. Right there. It just got tight. I have a tiny bit of side to side clearance, but I have zero vertical lash. If I push it really hard, I can feel the lifter plunger depressing, and that's okay. We don't want to expand this push rod so much that it builds preload into the lifter. The lifter has to have zero preload on it when you measure your push rod length. Now that my rocker arm is totally tight, we're gonna take this loose and take it all apart. Be careful not to bump your push rod at all. Pull it straight out, and I immediately pinch it right where it can swivel. Next, we'll grab our calipers. We're gonna drop this in. We have a tip to tip measurement of 7.902. I like to run 50 thou lash on these Gatorman lifters, so I now know my intake push rod. I need to order 7.950s. Now let's do the exact opposite for the exhaust. Let's drop the push rod back onto the intake lifter. Make sure it's sitting on the cup. And remember, when the intake starts to close, then we can set exhaust. So now I'm gonna roll the engine over. Feel the intake is rising lift right now. It just peaked lift. 
and now it's closing. Take this straight out, tighten it back up, and let's drop it onto our exhaust lifter. Right there, there it is. Now we can grab our exhaust rocker arm, throw its bolt and everything in there. And we're gonna repeat the exact same process. Tighten this down. We've got a little bit of lash, that's okay. Torque at the spec. And now we're gonna oh, we're gonna push the rocker arm against the lifter, away from the valve tip. Get in here and unscrew that adjustable push rod. You'll feel it close the rocker, and boom! It just took up all the lash, but I still have a little bit of side to side clearance. If you had so much pressure that it was depressing the plunger, you wouldn't have that side to side clearance. If you have a little bit of side to side clearance on the trunnion, but no vertical lash, you're in the right spot. Now, loosen it, take it straight out, grab your push rod, pinch the joint so it doesn't rotate on you for some reason, get your calipers, 7.865, kind of a funny length. I would probably go to 7.925 for this engine's exhaust to get my 50 thou plus or minus 10 thou preload. Okay, there you have it. It is really that simple. If you're really anal about it, you can go ahead and check all 16 push rods. However, we have found that with modern machining, the accuracy and tolerances of parts is so good nowadays. Even on my own personal engine, I just check one cylinder and carry on. If you've got 10 thou different push rod length across the board, you got something else weird going on, or maybe you're not measuring it correctly. Um, if you want, you could measure the one cylinder on one side and then jump to the other side of the engine to just to double check yourself and maybe average them out together and send it from there. This engine will run two different length push rods. Could be a stack of tolerances, could be a valve tip difference, could be the cam lobe difference. Doesn't really matter. We've got our lengths. I'm gonna order a set of eight of one and a set of eight of the other. And then once those get here, we can finish this engine and get it on the dyno. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day, and I'll see you later.